Should NASCAR grant Kyle Larson a waiver? Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Of course, NASCAR needs to grant Kyle Larson a waiver. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah, the rain threw a gigantic wrench into his plans. The intention was to run the Indianapolis 500, fly to Charlotte, run the Coke 600. I think everybody understands that. Everyone knows what the double is. Weather in Indianapolis pushes back the race start by four hours to 445. And now, obviously, he's not going to be able to make it to Charlotte on time. But he had every intention of making it to Charlotte. It's not like he told NASCAR, hey, I'm going to skip one of the Crown Jewel events to go run the biggest race in the world. He didn't say that. His intention was to get to Charlotte. He had every intent to make it there. And I think that his entire uh, plan for the day, his itinerary shows the intent on trying to get there. So at the end of the day, there's no reason to not grant the waiver, especially when NASCAR gives them out for anything and everything. But seeing the fan base and some of the media members take this hardline approach to it is baffling to me. Why is this the one where we draw the line? Well, he intentionally skipped a crown jewel event. He didn't intentionally skip it. The plan was always to be there. He was already in Indianapolis. He wants to make a run at the biggest race in the world. They elected to keep him there. Could they have flown him to Charlotte to race the 600? Yes. But at the end of the day, they probably had discussions with NASCAR and felt good about getting a waiver. That's why they left him there. And also, the Indianapolis 500 is vastly larger and means more to race car drivers than winning the Coke 600. No offense to the Coke 600. It's a crown jewel event, but it's not the Indianapolis 500. So Larson stays for the 500. Finishes P18. Obviously, that speeding penalty kind of doomed his shot out of top five, which he was very much in contention for. Then he flies to Charlotte, runs to his pit box, had every intention of getting in the car. Obviously, won't earn points because Justin Allgaier started it. NASCAR red flags the race, ultimately calls it, even though the track maybe was trying quicker than expected. And Larson's left with only completing 500 miles. And now the question looms of whether or not he deserves a waiver. NASCAR has a history, a precedent. They've set this precedent of handing out a waiver anytime someone asks for it. At this point, they hand out waivers for anything. Few examples here. I went ahead and jotted them down. 2014, Tony Stewart got one after the Kevin Ward incident where he missed three races. 2015, Kyle Busch gets a waiver for breaking his leg in the Xfinity Series, goes on to win the Cup Championship. Kurt Busch gets a waiver that same year after NASCAR suspended him for the first few races of the season when he was accused of assault by his ex-girlfriend. Ultimately, he is found not guilty. NASCAR granted him a waiver. Tony Stewart broke his back in the sand dunes uh, before the 2016 season, misses a decent portion of the first half of that year, grants a waiver. 2019, Johnny Sauter intentionally wrecks Austin Hill under caution at Iowa. NASCAR suspends him, still gives him a waiver for it. Ryan Newman granted a waiver after his Daytona crash in 2020. Matt Kenseth misses the first four races of 2020 as well, replaces Kyle Larson for the rest of the year, gets a waiver. 2021, Michael Annette, stress fracture in his leg, gets a waiver. Kurt, or Chris Buescher, 2022, COVID, gets a waiver. 2023, Chase Elliott breaks his leg while snowboarding, gets one. Then you have Taylor Gray, didn't turn 18 until March 18th, gets a waiver because he wasn't old enough to run the first couple races of the season. And then you have Alex Bowman break his back in a sprint car race, also gets a waiver. There's a number of different instances there. And now you have this Kyle Larson question and instance of being like, well, he missed one race because he was running another race and he couldn't get here on time. All right, you still had to grant him the waiver because you set this precedent of handing out a waiver for anything and everything. Jordan Bianchi went all Skip Bayless on the Teardown podcast this week where he said that he was playing, you know, the devil's advocate type of character, but he really took it over the top. And I'm pretty sure that he believes everything that he was saying. And it's baffling to me that people want to take this hardline approach for NASCAR's biggest star at the moment. There's nobody bigger than Kyle Larson. You can say Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott is not bigger than Kyle Larson in this moment. Banning him from the playoffs is such a bad look for the sport. It's so bad. A sport that's never been consistent on any of their calls, why would you start to try to, well, they would be inconsistent here, so maybe that's what this will be. Maybe they will deny him a waiver and continue this trend of being inconsistent. I doubt it. I don't think so. I think they've set this precedent. They understand that, and there's no way they can really uh, deny a waiver for Kyle Larson in this situation. But for all the people that are like, well, he intentionally skipped it. Again, he didn't intentionally skip it. Yes, he went to Indianapolis and knew that this could happen. Should they have flown him to Charlotte to run the 600? Maybe. But at the end of the day, this is, Coke 600 does not mean as much as the Indianapolis 500 does, regardless of what all the NASCAR people say. It just doesn't. It's a crown jewel event. Sure, people want to win it. Absolutely. But it doesn't have the same weight as the Indianapolis 500. 
There's a few solutions to make this whole situation go away. If NASCAR has a 36 race championship, no playoff, no this win and you're in type of format that they currently have, if all the races matter for points and it's an accumulation at the end of the year, Kyle Larson's not missing the Coke 600. Coke 600 pays the most points at any race this season because it has four stages. There's no way he skips that if this is a full season long championship. You can also get rid of the whole win and you're in format as well. It should just be the top 16 in points. And if it's the top 16 in points, you can still miss a race and, you know, hopefully that you point your way in. But having this whole win and you're in thing is kind of stupid at this point. Yes, NASCAR wanted it to put a lot more emphasis on wins, to encourage guys to win because then that would put them into the playoffs. But for the most part, every year, we're kind of seeing the same people win. You might get a wild card winner here or there. You know, Michael McDowell doing it at the Indy Road Course, Ricky Stenhouse doing it at the Daytona 500, something along those lines. Chris Buescher stealing one at Pocono in the fog, um, stuff like that. Nah, yeah, I get it, but there's no reason for it. Just have it be the top 16 in points. Remember how the old chase was the top 10 in points, that type of situation? Just go back to, to that because that eliminates having this whole debate because Kyle Larson can miss a race and still be third in points like he is right now, six points out of the lead. And we don't have to worry about this debate about, about waivers because it's kind of a dumb debate at this point. Because if you get rid of the win and you're in, obviously the whole win and you're in type of thing was uh, you know, meant to encourage and put emphasis on wins. And then NASCAR implemented the rule of like, you can't miss any races because they were worried about somebody winning Daytona and then just skipping weeks until the playoffs come. And would that ever happen? Highly unlikely. But I guess it could for a part-time team, and then they show up in the playoffs and try to run there. So I get they had to implement it in case of you know an odd circumstance happening. But now, when you have the waiver system, and you kind of just grant waivers for anything, missing a race isn't that big of a deal anymore. But if you had a full season-long championship, or you only took the top 16 in points, that puts a lot more emphasis on guys being there to race four points. So... There's a solution. Are they going to change anything about it? No, not in terms of the you know point system in the playoff format. I can absolutely see NASCAR revising the rule book to make um, a new rule, an exception for somebody skipping a NASCAR event to run another event at the same time. They'll still keep the medical waiver out there, I'm, I'm betting. I uh, obviously don't know, but I'm just guessing that they'll still keep the medical waiver, but they'll have you know a clause. There will be a you know 2.1 point A section of the rule book for that rule that would be like you can't miss a race while another nascar race is going on so it's a dumb debate to keep having because i think we all know that kyle larson's getting a waiver at the end of the day though he deserves that waiver because he's already won two races this year he had every intention of making it to charlotte it's not like he didn't want to be in charlotte obviously when you saw his interviews the guy is devastated that the day just did not go how they had planned at all and the worst case scenario happened for him. He doesn't even get to go to Charlotte and race with his team. Feels like he let his five team down. Feels like he let Rick Hendrick down and Jeff Gordon, everybody involved. And he didn't. He went out and gave it a great run at Indy. Speeding happens. It's a bummer. But hopefully he'll be able to, you know, rebound and make another run at it in 2025. But he should absolutely get a waiver. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.